I was just thinking in Amritvela, you know, many people these days, they say the BK path or the BK way of life or, you know, just about being a BK. But uh, I was just thinking about what is the foundation of this life, you know, this this path, whatever people call it, a practice, a path, a life, a way of living, a philosophy, a, a meditation, whatever it is called. But I was just thinking about, you know, how um, everything that we do is about our relationship with Baba. And the most important, the fundamental, the underlining, um, you know, the foundation of whatever is visible on the outside is this relationship with Baba. And um, the, the deeper, the purer, the more heartfelt the relationship with Baba is, the more intense your yoga with Baba is. Basically, yoga in the Raj Yoga um, aspect is not any, some technical, mental or physical exercise. It's just, you know, that cord which connects your heart with Baba and that is purely based on knowing Baba and loving Baba for who he is. And I think the whole Gyan is about just knowing yourself as a soul and knowing Baba as your world. So when you know you are a soul and this is my world, this is my Baba, this is the one who has always been mine, who will always be mine. This is just me and my Baba. This is my whole world. When you realize this, then you start uh, doing what Baba is telling you and you start having faith in your, you know, your story as a soul. And, and I was just thinking, you know, it is amazing that until Baba comes, we never realize that we are falling. And um, even, you know, when you are not having yoga with Baba, when your yoga with Baba is not very good, that means uh, somewhere, you know, you are still under the sway of Maya, then also it becomes very difficult to discern that this world is a world where everybody is falling. Because, you know, Maya makes us wear those glasses where you feel that, you know, lust, anger, ego, attachment, greed, sensual pleasure, indulgence, and all of these things are very normal, very natural. But um, just think about, you know, how Maya has messed up with our minds and our buddhi and our sanskar and we don't discern that, you know, uh, when you are indulging, so indulgence in sensual pleasure is like giving away your power, your power to stay blissful and happy. You're giving away your power to something or someone or some sense, you know, some sensual object you're giving away your power to. And then um, only when that is available to you, you will be able to feel happy. If that is not available to you, you won't be able to feel happy. And you know, there was this person I met some days back and he told me that I'm, a, I'm an addict and I, I'm a, I'm a alcohol addict. I'm an alcoholic. And I was just asking him, so, uh, so I told him, okay, so you are an alcoholic and you are an addict. So 
when you come here so what is it that you feel is is um, is troubling you because of which you came so what is the realization so he said that uh, my realization is that i am not very well off i don't earn a lot of money but whatever i earn i spend it on alcohol and uh, that's why you know my family is suffering my children are suffering everybody is suffering because of that and somewhere i understand that that's not the right thing to do so then i asked him then why do you do it so he said you know i cannot stay in peace or i cannot be happy when um, when i don't drink after it is a certain time in the evening so i feel that urgency that sense of you know a calling for and i feel like i cannot rest stay in peace if i don't do it so i was just thinking about you know how miserable the condition of people has become and it is not just about you know um an an, an addiction of food drink or drugs it's about the addiction of you know a holiday or tea or coffee or food in general or you know the addiction of emotions so uh, you want somebody to be nice to you or you want somebody to speak softly and sweetly to you or speak in a certain way to you or the addiction of money or success or power or performance so if you don't if there is no external good performance then you cannot be in peace and it is maya has made us so much dependent on this old materialistic world and in this world nothing can stay constant and every time you know you consume these um you consume these uh, pleasures that come from outside you consume you uh, try to drown yourself in uh, in this you know ocean of sensual pleasures and material attainments and success and position and money and power then you're giving away your spiritual power and what is spiritual power spiritual power is this fantastic ability of the soul to stay stable peaceful loveful happy blissful powerful pure come what may so the soul has this amazing ability the soul is by nature you know the soul is designed like that but i the soul have given away all my power and then you know i don't know how, what we are rejoicing and celebrating in this whole world and everybody is so dependent on external things that it it doesn't even take a second for the happiness to change into sorrow or the uh, happiness to change into disappointment because as soon as the source is taken away you start feeling frustrated and desperate and uh, you know yearning and wanting and uh, i don't know what so this is the way maya has tricked us into this state or predicament and baba is um, baba is telling us that you know children this is your story and um, and on top of it we have the theory of evolution which makes us believe that you know we are just going uphill and everything is improving and there is technology and there is advancement and then people are you know moving up the hill and not down the hill so this is what the theory of evolution makes us believe and you know uh, there many years back i had this beautiful moment where somebody was describing me about an illness and then i told him uh, so why don't you get yourself treated so he told me a very beautiful line he told me that you know you believe in medical science until you fall ill and then you know that majority of the diseases don't have a cure 
and when you go to the doctor, the doctor will tell you, you know, every disease has a cure, but only your disease doesn't have a cure. And then you hear it from so many ill people that majority of the diseases, and he told me uh, that almost 90% of the diseases don't have a cure. But still, you know, you believe that we are advancing medically and this and that. And then again, you know, health or that feeling of being healthy is something that doesn't even come after the treatment. So we are all living in this world where we are made to believe that uh, we are evolving and everything is going great and going uphill. And this is such a great illusion that Maya has created. And uh, Baba is every day telling us, and when we take the course, Baba says that, you know, you lived in a world where there was absolute health, absolute happiness, absolute good relationships, absolute wealth. So your wealth was not like, you know, your wealth, um, uh, your wealth was not like it would diminish in value if you use some of it. No, you had everything in the golden age. And then Baba says, Maya started robbing you and also, you know, um, deluding you. So uh, we became, we became empty and delusional both. So both the things Maya kept doing, it kept emptying us because of this buddhi we got through which we engaged in lust, anger, ego, attachment, greed, and we started performing actions which just robbed us of our spiritual strength. And then on the other hand, this delusion or this illusion that, you know, um, you, you are advancing, you are doing great, or, you know, when you have people, places, things going your way, that's a great way to be. So all these things just kept happening until Baba comes and tells us. But, you know, again, um, even when we understand everything, it's very easy to uh, forget and again, you know, get into Maya's trap because um, when you don't have your buddhi yoga with Baba, then Maya tricks you again. And uh, that, is, that is what Baba is every day cautioning us. And Baba, when you have buddhi yoga with Baba, then Baba is the ocean of knowledge. So obviously when you are connected with the ocean of knowledge, when your buddhi is turned towards the ocean of knowledge, then you have clarity of vision then Maya is not able to put, uh, put you under, you know, put you behind that um, glasses of delusion and then you can see clearly what is what. And the moment you don't have yoga with Baba, you again fall into that delusion. And then you again rob yourself of your spiritual energy. And sometimes, you know, you keep playing this game, Maya, Baba, Maya, Baba. And then, you know, you, uh, it's very difficult for you to bounce back because you have uh, lost a lot of your energy. So if you are in that place where uh, you have, you know, you are just, you know, you are uh, playing this game between Maya, Baba, Maya, Baba, and then, you know, you're losing your energy and Sometimes you feel, you know, it's very difficult to bounce back also because again, you know, holding that, holding Baba's hand becomes very difficult. And this is what Baba is always warning us about that don't leave my hand every now and then. Otherwise, it will become increasingly difficult because with every blow of Maya, you lose faith. And the first faith you lose is in yourself. So whenever Maya gives you a blow, then you somewhere lose faith in yourself. And with, and you know, even to hold Baba's hand, 
you need faith in yourself because the first thing is you have to know you are a soul and only then can you remember Baba. So when you do karma which is influenced by Maya, then that karma makes you lose faith in yourself. And that loss in faith is a very big faith, very big loss because because of that loss, you're not able to remember Baba and take help from Baba. And when you know everything and then you do something, then it starts eating you up in some way. And then uh, it, it becomes increasingly difficult. And then Baba says, I'm every day giving you the blessing that you stay alive on this path, you know. <laughs> staying alive on this path is the most important thing but if you don't pay attention and you always pay, fall into Maya's trap then that you know but the, my child will die this is what is Baba's biggest you know um, uh, biggest concern because of which Baba is every day warning us and this is something and Baba in the Murli today is talking about two types of children those who surrender themselves completely and you know what I think that um, this surrender or what is the meaning of surrender so Baba today says that complete surrender means becoming a complete trustee complete becoming a complete trustee of your body mind and wealth and never using anything uh, out of Srimat so you know um, Srimat is our guide guideline and it's our you know it's our it's the it's the it's the line it's the boundary within which we have to stay and Baba says that when you don't surrender yourself so and what is the sign of a surrendered soul so how would a surrendered soul <coughs> excuse me how would a surrendered soul uh, use their body mind and wealth so that's what Baba is clarifying today and Baba is saying that when you are surrendered so obviously your body, mind and wealth um, are used in seva totally. So surrendered life, a trusty life, a life based on Srimat means your body, mind and wealth is completely used for seva and this is what Baba is asking us to do and whenever uh, so it doesn't matter whether it is lokik or alokik you know sometimes it's um, uh, it's the seva of you know it's uh, it's the seva of you the soul you also need to be served so use, you use your body, your mind, your wealth for Swapurusharth, for your own spiritual development. That is also Seva because you are serving you the soul. So that's also Seva. But Seva means spiritual development. Seva means spiritual development. Seva doesn't mean uh, feeding the desires and expectations of this old world. So, it can be lokik uh, in your lokik family also. But is it seva? So, do you look at the soul and are you investing your body, mind and wealth in the spiritual development of the soul? Or are you looking at the body or are you looking at the relationship or are you looking at your expectations from the relationship and then investing in them? And all of this is very very subtle so this is why in the Murli today Baba says only you know and Baba knows <laughs> only you know and Baba knows whether you 
uh, whether you are a trustee or not or whether you have used everything for seva or not and what your final destination will be when you leave the body. So the most important thing that Baba is today talking about is the quality of sage bache. So sage bache, I don't know how it's translated in English. So Baba says um, real children. So there are real children and stepchildren. So uh, so the quality of real children is sage bache is they surrender everything completely to Baba and um, they surrender their body, mind and wealth and whenever they have a thought it's always about spiritual development, it's always about it's, it's a thought that you know uh, raises the development of uh, whether it is the five elements, whether it is souls around you, whether it is you the soul doesn't matter logic or otherwise but when you look at the soul and every thought you create is about the upliftment of souls, upliftment in general of the five elements of nature that is using your mind for seva, being a trustee. Because what does Baba want? Baba wants this hell to change into heaven and that will only happen through seva. And Baba today tells us, do you understand and realize that you are the Shiv Shakti army and you are the only ones who can uh, uplift this whole world, who can change this whole world from hell to heaven. You are the only ones who can tell all souls the spiritual truth, the story, connect their yoga with Baba. So, you're the only ones who can do that. You're the only ones who can serve through your body, mind and wealth. Nobody even knows, you know, where to, that, uh, you know, this wealth can be used for spiritual service. Nobody even knows this. People only know that this wealth can be used for physical service or, you know, you can donate it to an NGO or you can donate it to a temple. They don't know that God has come and His task is happening here. So you are the only one who can use your body, mind and wealth for seva. And this is the only seva that is possible right now because, you know, even if you clothe and feed and everything, that's not going to solve the problem of the world. So no physical seva nothing else can solve the problem of the world. So Baba says it is only spiritual seva, it is only the seva which makes a soul realize who they are and what they are capable of, that seva is going to uplift the world. But, and I think the most important seva is, you know, waking up souls from this darkness and inertia of Maya. And um, this darkness of Maya, which doesn't allow anybody to see that we are depleting, that's, um, and you know, Maya glorifies wastage, Maya glorifies pop, Maya glorifies laziness, Maya glorifies not using your um, assets for not sharing your assets for world development, that's what Maya glorifies and um, Maya is um, and uplifting souls from this delusion of Maya and making souls realize that you are a soul and this is your journey and this is how you've been deluded and now you have to use your body, mind and wealth for your own self-development, building spiritual power and not, you know, material power or material accumulation. So making every soul come to that place is the only seva, I think. And Baba says that uh, when you surrender yourself 
and then you do this karma. So, you know there is this word Baba uses today which is donation and Baba and in Hindi it is called daan and punya. So, you know you have two words in Hindi daan and punya and um, it is it is something that I have churned on and I am just sharing what came to my mind today that you know when you um, so today Baba says that there are souls who will not who will say that you know leading a life of purity is very difficult for me and they will just uh, say that you know I can help in the task by donating some money and then Baba says that okay even if they do that I will make them understand that they cannot get kingship but they will get some position okay because they are donating their wealth and Baba says that Baba says today that this donating this and Baba underlines the fact that donation means when you do it for for others so today Baba underlines this beautiful thing and says that you know if a person in bhakti builds a hospital and he has the intention that I am building it so that when I fall ill I will get treated in it then that is not donation Okay, so because the intention is more important than the action. So even if you know that person is building a whole hospital and many people are coming and taking benefit from it, what is in the heart of that person? The in the heart of that person is I did it for myself. So, he did it for selfish reasons. So, when, uh, so you know, he could afford it. So, he did it because he wanted to be in a place where he could get the best treatment when he wanted. So, he built a hospital for himself. So, that doesn't count. But when he does it for seva, so when he says that, okay, I want to build a hospital so that many other people come and take sustenance from it. So it's not like in the end that person can't be treated there. He may or he may not. That's not the question. The question is the intention with which it is built. Similarly, Baba says that hospital which gives physical health and may or may not get ensure physical health you donate for that you get a return in bhakti so here also when somebody helps to build a center okay so which is a spiritual hospital and a spiritual school so Baba says even if that person doesn't embrace a life of purity he will get the return of that but what is the intention is important because if the intention is that in my later life this will function like an old age home and I will come and stay here. So maybe you stay there no problem but the thing is what is your intention? If that is your intention then there is a problem. So Baba says that if the if if you give it if you do something, if you donate something so that if and Baba of course is not talking about BK souls because BK souls surrender everything okay that is a different thing. But even in the world if somebody donates something for building a center or a spiritual hospital come school so Baba says that person will also get some return of it. But then you know there is Daan and there is Punya and Punya is uh, I think Punya is not about just giving away something which is physical. So Daan relates to something physical. 
so you can give money or you can give some support or uh, you can donate some quality you have some you can have some expertise and you can just uh, donate that but punya means it has to be uh, you know it is karma so uh, punya is created by a purity so when you have purity you know when you embrace a life of purity then you can do punya karma and then you know when you have surrendered yourself to baba and when you have embraced a life of purity then everything that you do will earn you an income so the way you think you know every thought will earn you uh, punya so punya karma will be earned through thought word deeds drishti vritti everything so baba says that is punya karma but daan sometimes you know you can even do without punya so uh, daan also will inc- incur you some charitable income but then that daan can be done physically but punya cannot be done without being pure punya means you have to be a punya atma for that so this is also something that baba is talking about and baba today says that only the real children surrender everything completely and then you know baba says that uh, because uh, when you surrender everything completely everything is used in seva then that seva makes you earn a lot of you know um would you say power from this dan punya and because of that also from the seva ka bal also you are able to win over maya and then there are step children who do not surrender everything to baba and then what they do is they they keep using their body mind and wealth under the dictates of vices and because of that maya is always able to have power over their life and this is why they will keep falling sometimes because of maya so it's important that you close your door towards maya and how do you close your door towards maya that's by surrendering yourself to baba and you know it is my experience that um you know doing some dan punya is not difficult so you know sometimes you will do something because and you may have very good intention also you may not have any selfish interest so giving some time to baba giving some uh, support of wealth to baba or baba's task uh, giving something is not very difficult but surrender is very difficult and when you surrender and uh, even in the privacy of your mind when you don't um, entertain any thoughts given by maya also that surrender takes courage and you can only surrender when you're very soul conscious when you have realized baba when you have love for baba and uh when you have this deep love for baba because in my experience only love has the power to make you surrender nothing else on earth can make you surrender so when you love baba deeply and you know even this love that you have for baba this love makes you draw the power this yoga power from baba which helps you surrender and you know there will be so many resistances from maya from your sanskars from so from you know from this manushya mat that is filled in your buddhi there will be so many resistances but you know this love in your heart for baba and this yoga with baba this can make you surrender and when you surrender then maya you can win over maya otherwise you know when you are half surrendered which is uh, that is not even surrender when you are half way so 
the stepchildren situation. Then what happens is you are between Baba and Maya and then back and forth, back and forth and then what happens is Maya is able to defeat you all the time. And then uh, slowly they develop doubts also because there will be self-doubt and because of that self-doubt there will be doubt in Maya, Baba also. Because uh, once you have self-doubt you cannot see Baba and then you will have doubt in Baba also. So this is what Baba is saying today. The, today's Murli is quite deep so <laughs> you need to uh, listen to it with the heart. Of course every Murli you have to listen to from the heart. And then Baba today says that you must cling on to Baba. And then Baba says even if you cling on to Baba you cannot stay, you know, in one place. You have to run for service also. So, Baba says, you must always stay clinged on and always on seva. So, Baba says that because Baba is avyakt and now Baba is totally avyakt. So, when Baba was in the body of Brahma Baba, Sakar Brahma, at that time, you know, children would always have the temptation to be in and around Baba physically. But then now the situation is that whenever you are on Seva, you feel Baba's love, you feel Baba's companionship and Baba says cling on to Baba and be on Seva always. And I remember there was this blessing I received from Gulzar Dadi and Gulzada, they said, Seva dhari mana baap ki pyari. So, whenever you are a Seva dhari, so Baba always loves you and you always feel like you are very close to Baba. So, Baba says, clinging on to Baba is the same thing as being on Seva all the time. Because when you are in Seva, then Baba is always with you. Okay, Om Shanti.